Welcome to this episode of Just One Thing. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to use remote desktop in the Windows Azure environment. My name is Adam Kraholski and I'm a technical evangelist with RBA Consulting. Um, basically, you'll see the configuration here. I'll talk to that in a minute, but one of the reasons you want to consider enabling remote desktop uh, is for troubleshooting, especially if you're kind of a first timer or a newbie uh, developing for Windows Azure and deploying out to Azure. There are certain problems, certain situations that are going to come up uh, due to differences between the emulator on your local machine and the actual Azure environment. Keep in mind that emulator has about 90% of the production code, but it doesn't have everything. So there will be cases where things work fine on your machine, but when you deploy them out to the cloud, they're not working quite right. Uh, for example, maybe startup task. If you're using a startup task to do some configuration, some installation, uh, it seems to be working on your machine using tools like remote desktop and PS, uh, the PSXet command line tool from Sysinternals is a great way to troubleshoot what's actually going on in Azure. Uh, setting it up is very simple. Uh, we'll look at that in just a moment. But in terms of configuration, you have to keep in mind that Azure, you know, all instances are running behind a load balancer. Uh, so RDP requests do come in over port 3389. And in order to enable remote desktop in Azure, you have to use something called a remote forwarder. Now, you don't really do anything about this. Uh, kind of the tooling handles it for you. But this remote forwarder has to get installed uh, on at least uh, one role. That way, as other requests come in, remote RDP requests come in for other roles, um, that request can get forwarded to the right role instance uh, that you want to remote into. That's kind of what the configuration looks like under the covers, uh, but we'll take a look at what you need to know in terms of how to actually get it configured for your apps. So with that, I'm going to go to a demo and show you how to get RDP up and running. So what I've created in Visual Studio is a Windows Azure project with just a simple web and a simple worker role. And we're going to look at how to get RDP or remote desktop enabled for those roles so I can go into the cloud and actually kind of peek around, see what's going on under the covers. So to do that, you'll notice that if I go to the roles themselves, kind of the, the files, I can't really change anything there. So what I can do instead uh, to do remote desktop, the easiest thing to do is actually walk through the publish wizard. So right click on the Azure project and select publish. And you'll notice here at the bottom, there's an option. You can obviously go and select all these. I'm not going to actually publish anything. I have something out there running already, but um, you can you know, obviously specify credentials and environments. But then at the bottom, there's configure remote desktop connections. If I click on that, I can enable the connections for all the roles. First thing, and then what I need to do is specify a certificate. So this is a certificate on my machine, and it also has to be up in the cloud. We'll talk about how to do that in a minute. And the reason you have this is for um, encryption, to encrypt user credentials uh, going across the wire when you actually perform uh, or start a remote desktop session. So see, I have a number of certificates on my machine. Of course, I can create a new one here. So this is, we'll call it my brand new certificate for Azure. We'll have to remember that name. We'll need to look at it in a minute. And it'll take just a, a, a couple seconds here, and we'll go through and we'll have the certificate created. Once that's done, we'll then want to specify a username and password. Uh, and this password will get encrypted using the certificate that we created. Another option for creating certificates, if you're used to... Um, if you're used to creating certs through um, Internet Information Services or IS or uh, kind of the cert maker command line, uh, you can certainly do that as well, but this tooling allows you to. So I will just put in my name, Adam, my awesomely secret password. And this will create a local ad administrator on the machine, and then I'll give it an expiration date here. Notice by default it gives you one month. We'll just give it a 13 months and click OK. Now at this point, I could um, publish to the cloud, but it wouldn't work yet. And the reason is, is because I need to have that certificate I use for the credentials encryption on my machine out into up in the cloud. So let me show you how to do that. Um, the first thing I want to do is open the cert manager. So the uh, management console, so cert manager will pop up, but I need to find that certificate I created. So once we have cert manager running, I'm, I'm going to find the certificate. I need to export it, and I actually need to export it with a key, so with a password, so that I can then import it into the cloud. So when I created that certificate, uh, it got created under my, uh, my, my personal store on the machine under the current user. And let's see. 
Where are we here? My brand new. Here's, so here's the one I just created. So what did I call it again? My brand new certification furniture. So what I can do, is I right click. There we go, all tasks, all export. Next, uh, yes, I do need the private key in this case. Personal information exchange, I need to throw a password on here. And I need to specify a file, so say my brand new cert.sir. Click finish. All right, so now I've exported it off my machine. Now I need to get it up into the cloud. That's easily accomplished. I can go into the management portal and select uh, the service that I want to install the cert on. And you'll see there's a certificates folder under there. I can click add certificate. So I can browse to, let's see, my brand new cert on my machine, specify the password, and click OK. And this will upload the X509 certificate and have it ready to go in the cloud. So now any um, so roles that or that get deployed under this particular service account can have uh, can utilize that cert as well. So now at this point I can go back to my Visual Studio project and I could deploy this if I wanted to, um, and Remote Desktop would be ready to go. Of course, I've already got something deployed in the cloud with Remote Desktop running. So let's go take a look at that right here. So once I have remote desktop running, I can go into one of my deployments, find an instance, and I can connect. So the, this connect button lights up. And what it'll do is it'll give me a couple prompts. So it says, hey, do you want to open this RDP file? I'll select yes. Now I need to present my credentials. So these are the credentials I created uh, in Visual Studio, and I'll click OK. And it'll give me it'll give me a warning about um, it can't be verified due to the certificate. I'll, I'll just say yes. If I wanted to use a certificate from an authority for this, I could do that as well. And there, I've uh, successfully remote desktop into my um, machine. So if you want to take a quick look around, you'll notice it's Windows Server 2008 R2. So lots of things you're used to seeing there are, are here. If you go in, you can actually kind of peep around the hard drive. You'll see you get three drives, a C, D, and E drive. Windows is actually installed on D drive here. Um, on the E drive, that's where your application, so in this case, I have a website. My application actually gets uh, installed on the E drive. And then the C drive is used um, as a buffer for um, diagnostic data. Um, if you set up uh, something known as local storage, that data will get written to C. The thing to keep in mind, though, is that these could change at any point in time. Windows could go to E, your applications could go to C, and kind of that kind of that local data store could go to E, another drive could be introduced, etc. Um, this is you shouldn't kind of go into this looking at the environment and figure, okay, now I can code to these paths because you're working with a platform as service model, and the whole point is that these things are actually abstracted away from you. But it's still nice to kind of go in and dig around. One other thing I want to caution you about too. Um, it could be tempting to, if you've kind of configured something, uh, deploy something to the cloud and it's not working, to use RDP to go in and say, let me open up Internet Information Services, and maybe I need to make a tweak to my app pool or, or whatever it is. Don't do it. Remote Desktop for Azure is not meant as, as a management tool. It's meant as di for diagnostics and troubleshooting, uh, if anything. And the reason is, is because any changes I make here, so if I change my IIS configuration, if this instance goes down, gets recycled, gets moved, gets spun up somewhere else, all those changes are gone. Um, you know, so if you want to manage and configure your instances, you need to use things like startup tasks and, and scripts uh, to do that when your instances start, rather than going in and manually making those settings, because those settings will not persist um, from instance to instance. And of course, if I had 100 instances running, I'd have to go in each one to make to apply those changes. So remember, remote desktop really meant as a, as a troubleshooting tool, especially if you're just getting started uh, in the cloud. And that's it for this episode uh, of Just One Thing on Remote Desktop. Uh, it's a very useful tool. I highly recommend you set it up uh, as you start developing for the cloud. That way, when, once you finally deploy to the cloud, you can go in and troubleshoot kind of the, the initial problems you're going to run into as you're starting to, to learn about the platform.